that will again foment from many of the Philippines, Southeastern Asia. Exactly 30 years ago today, on November the 9th, 1989, the communist East German government, which had already lost a great majority of its popularity, and whose hardline leader, uh, the country's virtual dictator since 1971, Mr. Erich Honecker, had been dismissed uh, from being the uh, chairperson of the ruling Socialist Unity Party, uh, the youth euphemism for um, East Germany's Communist Party, just three weeks earlier had been dismissed with Mr. Egon Krenz, a more reform-minded communist um, leader, taking over as the country's new leader. However, he was unable to effectively control the situation anymore. And therefore, by November the 9th, 1989, the communist East German government decided to allow East Berlin's uh, people to freely cross the border wall known as the Berlin Wall into West Berlin. Already since the summer of 1989, that is for some or several months, thousands of East Germans had uh, decided to leave the country during that year, that summer and early autumn via Czechoslovakia, and Hungary. And uh, they had then immigrated usually to West Germany, although in some cases also to Austria. And uh, during 1989, Poland had held partly free parliamentary elections, which had been easily won by the largest opposition party and group, the Solidarity Trade Union. Um, Hungary had announced upcoming parliamentary elections to be held in March 1990. And just weeks, about three weeks, or actually less than three weeks after the fall of the Berlin Wall, Czechoslovakia would announce uh, upcoming free elections. Um, also, Bulgaria during November 1989 dismissed its old uh, communist dictator, Mr. Todor Zhivkov, and announced that democratic elections would be held in 1990. In Yugoslavia, democratic elections had at last uh, been held, and it showed that the communists were losing their popularity also there. In the Soviet Union, for the first time, competitive parliamentary elections were held, which showed that the communists were losing their popularity also there, because a significant minority of independents had been elected to the new Soviet parliament called the Congress of People's Deputies, even though um, formal opposition parties at the federal level were not yet allowed there. Only Romania and Albania were resisting uh, the calls for reform. But as we know, during December 1989, the second half of the month, Romania would have its violent and bloody revolution where the longtime dictator president Nicolae Ceausescu was overthrown and he and his wife Elena <clears throat> were then sentenced to death and executed after a hastily prepared show trial. And eventually in 1991 <clears throat> Albania's communist dictator Ramiz Aliyev would announce democratic elections that took place in 1992. For years, um, most East Germans had been able to watch West German democratically produced television programs. So when Mr. Günther Schabowski, who was the, the spokesperson for the communist East German government, announced <clears throat> that uh, the Berlin Wall could be freely crossed without passports, without permits, um, a great majority of the East Germans learned within hours of that. Uh, Shabovsky hadn't been fully updated about the um, this reform, actually the actual date when the reform should take place. And that's why he announced that as far as he could uh, understand already that evening, this policy would go into effect, even though the East German Communist Party wanted to allow an overnight um, transition 
so that the policy would only become valid starting on the morning of um, November the 10th, 1989. At first, many East German border guards uh, at the Berlin Wall tried to prevent uh, the people from freely passing through and actually uh, started to stamp their passports uh, or tried to uh, start to stamp their passports uh, with a stamp that would actually cancel their citizenship. But as the uh, East Berliners told, they had jobs to go to tomorrow morning in East or the next morning in East Berlin. Which, of course, then meant <clears throat> that uh, the uh, border guards eventually allowed the people to flow through, the East Berliners to flow through the Berlin Wall uh, with little or no identity checking. Um, many East Berliners were greeted warmly by West Berliners. Champagne bottles were opened uh, and people started to chant songs. So let's look at the details now. In German, Mauer Fall, because uh, the Berlin Wall was called der Berliner Mauer. In the communist East German propaganda language, it was called der Anti-Fascistischer Schutzwall, or the Anti-Fascist Protective Wall. Following the dismantling of an electric fence along the border between Hungary and Austria in April 1989, so about seven months before the Berlin Wall fell or was opened, by early November 1989, refugees were finding their way to Hungary via Czechoslovakia or via the West German embassy in Prague. Initially, the communist East German government tolerated this emigration because of long-standing agreements with the communist Czechoslovak government allowing free travel across their common border. However, this movement of people grew so large it caused difficulties for both countries. In addition, East Germany was struggling to meet loan payments on foreign borrowings. The country's uh, soon-to-be new leader, Mr. Egon Krenz, sent Alexander Schalk Golodkowski to unsuccessfully ask West Germany for a short-term loan to make interest payments. On October the 18th, 1989, the country's longtime dictator and chairperson of the ruling Socialist Unity Party, Mr. Erich Honecker, was peacefully dismissed by the party central committee <clears throat> in favor of Krenz. Honecker had been seriously ill, and those looking to replace him were initially willing to wait for a biological solution. In other words, that Honecker either would die of his serious illness or then he would become so sick that he would no longer have the willpower, let alone the physical power, to govern the country. Besides, he was opposed to any significant reforms, either in the communist political system or in the socialist economic system of East Germany. <clears throat> By October 1989, and in early October of that year, specifically on October the 7th, 1989, when East Germany officially celebrated its 40 years, as an independent country, although of course it wasn't truly an independent country until the Glasnost and Perestroika reforms of uh, Mikhail Gorbachev in the Soviet Union, which had begun in 1985. <clears throat> and Gorbachev actually indirectly warned Honecker by saying something like this at the uh, anniversary celebration, that history punishes those <clears throat> who are too slow to get on board uh, with major or important historical changes, or something like that. Because Honecker had until then strongly resisted any reforms uh, that would uh, pave the way for the elimination of the Communist Party's monopoly on power. East Germany did have four token uh, minor parties, the uh, Christian Democrats, Liberal Democrats, National Democrats, and Farmers parties. However, these were only token political parties. They were given a quota 
of 208 seats out of 500 in the Fox Kammer or People's Chamber, the official name for the East German Parliament. However, they were not allowed to openly criticize, let alone compete against the ruling Socialist Unity Party. <clears throat> Honecker approved the choice naming Mr. Egon Krenz in his resignation speech and the Volkskammer confirmed Krenz's election. Krenz did promise reforms in his first public speech. However, he was considered by the East German public to be following his predecessor's policies and public protests demand his resignation continued. Although he promised reforms, the uh, East Germans including most East Berliners kept, or many of them anyway, kept demanding the end of the um, Socialist Unity Party's monopoly on power. On November the 1st, 1989, Krenz had authorized the reopening of the border with Czechoslovakia, which had been sealed to prevent East Germans from fleeing to West Germany. On November the 4th, 1989, the Alexanderplatz, or Alexander Square, demonstration took place in East Berlin. On November the 6th, the Interior Minister published ministry, sorry, published a draft of new travel regulations, which made cosmetic changes to Honecker era rules, leaving the approval process opaque, so partly transparent, and maintaining uncertainty regarding access to foreign currency. The draft enraged ordinary citizens and was denounced as complete trash by West Berlin Mayor Walter Momper. Hundreds of refugees crowded onto the steps of the West German Embassy in Prague, enraging the Czechoslovaks who threatened to seal off the East German Czechoslovak border. <clears throat> On November the 7th, 1989, Krenz approved the resignation of Prime Minister Willy Stoff and two thirds of the Politburo or the um, Central Committee of the uh, East German Communist Party, the country's virtual government. However, Krenz was unanimously re-elected as General Secretary by the Central Committee. On October the 19th, Krenz asked Gerhard Lauter to prepare a new travel policy. At a meeting of the Politburo on November the 7th, uh, the East German communist leaders decided to enact a portion of the draft travel regulations addressing permanent emigration immediately. The interior and Stasi, meaning Staatssicherheit, state security, the notorious East German uh, secret police that kept spying on many, if not most, East Germans, definitely all those who were considered disloyal or suspicious, charged with Crafting the new text, however, concluded that this was not feasible. In other words, create the creation of a special border crossing near Schirnding specifically for this emigration. <clears throat> it stipulated that East German citizens could apply for permission to travel abroad without having to meet the previous requirements for those trips, and also allowed for permanent emigration between all border crossings, including those between East and West Berlin. Ah. <clears throat> Especially since the 1970s, the Berlin Wall had been very strictly guarded and escape or attempt to escape uh, across the Berlin Wall uh, had become almost impossible, although some people <clears throat> every now and then managed to do that. Also, the inner German border had become almost impenetrable starting in the 1960s or the 1970s. <clears throat> to ease the difficulties, the Politburo led by Krenz decided on November the 9th to allow refugees to exit directly from crossing points between East Germany and West Germany, including between East and West Berlin. Later on November the 9th, the ministerial administration modified the proposal to include private round trip travel. The new regulations were to take effect on November the 10th. The announcement of the reg regulations which brought down the wall 
took place at an hour-long press conference led by Mr. Günther Schabowski, the party leader in East Berlin and the spokesman for the Socialist Unity Party's Politburo. Beginning at 6 p.m. Central European Time and broadcast live on East German television and radio. So because he had not been involved in the discussions about the new regulations and had not been fully updated, <clears throat> he then replied to a question by ANSA's Ricardo Ehrmann, asking if the draft travel law of November the 6th, 1989, was a mistake. <clears throat> After a few seconds hesitation, Shabovsky replied, as far as I know, it meaning the free travel uh, of East Germans across the Berlin Wall and therefore the uh, e uh, free visits, uh, unhindered visits uh, to West Berlin by East Berliners. As far as I know, it takes imme effect immediately without delay. Or in German, das tritt nach meiner Kenntnis, ist das sofort unverzüglich. Crucially, a journalist then asked if the regulation also applied to the crossings to West Berlin. Shabovsky shrugged and read item three of the note, which confirmed that it did. After this exchange, Daniel Johnson of the Daily Telegraph asked what this new law meant for the Berlin Wall. Shabovsky sat frozen before giving a rambling statement about the wall being tied to the larger disarmament question. He then ended the press conference promptly at 7.00 p.m. Central European time as journalists hurried from the room. After the press conference, Shabovsky uh, gave an interview to one of the most famous American television journalists at the time, Tom Brokaw of ABC, where he repeated that East Germans would be able to emigrate through the border and the regulations would go into effect immediately. Although the internet as we know, it had only been uh, invented that year as uh, the World Wide Web, although the Internet's most primitive form, the ARPANET, had already been invented in 1969. Even uh, through the television and radio, um, the news spread very quickly. Of course, nowadays, in 2019, the news would spread via the social media uh, almost uh, in a matter of seconds. <laughs> A few minutes. <clears throat> the West German Deutsche Presse Agentur issued a bulletin at 7.04 p.m. Central European time, which reported that East German citizens <clears throat> would be able to cross the inner German border immediately. <clears throat> Excerpts from Shabovsky's press conference were broadcast on East uh, West Germany's two main news programs that night at 7.17 p.m. on uh, ZDFs or uh, yeah, say CDF's Heute or today, which came on the air as the press conference was ending, and as the lead story at 8:00 p.m. on ARD's Tages Show or uh, the day's uh, news broadcast. As ARD and ZDF had broadcast to nearly all of East Germany since the late 1950s and were far more widely viewed than the East German channels, which of course had to obey the communist government's propagandistic instructions, which would, for example, try to gloss over any uh, reports of uh, public protests, pro-democracy protests or pro-human rights protests in East Germany, <clears throat> and which would falsify uh, any news related to uh, the fact that uh, more and more East Germans were fed up with the communist and socialist systems and had become accepted by the East German authorities. So in retrospect, if the East German authorities had blocked access, at least uh, legal access to the West German television, the fall of the Berlin Wall might even have taken months or maybe a few years longer, theoretically. This was how most of the population heard the news. Later that evening, <clears throat> on ARD's Tages Themen, or the day's themes, anchorman Mr. Hans Joachim Friedrich proclaimed, this November the 9th is a historic day. 
the German Democratic Republic, which was uh, East Germany's official name, has announced that starting immediately its borders are open to everyone. The gates in the wall stand wide open. In 2009, Ehrman claimed that a member of the Central Committee had called him and urged him to ask about the travel law during the press conference, but Shabovsky called that absurd. Ehrman later recanted this statement in a 2014 interview with an Austrian journalist admitting that the caller was Mr. Günther Pötschke, head of the East German news agency ADN, and he only asked if Ehrman would attend the press conference. So after hearing the broadcast, East Germans began gathering at the wall at the six checkpoints between East and West Berlin, demanding that border guards immediately open the gates. The border guards, since they hadn't been updated about um, the press conference, <coughs> became surprised and overwhelmed, <coughs> making many hectic telephone calls to their superiors about the problem. At first, they were ordered to find the more aggressive people gathered at the gates and stamp their passports with a special stamp, barring them from returning to East Germany. So in effect, um, revoking their citizenship. But since most of uh, those who already had finished their studies were working, they pointed out the fact that they had jobs to go to the following morning on November the 10th. 1989 in East Berlin, and therefore they had better be allowed to return. <laughs> Thousands of people kept demanding to be let through, as Shabovsky said, we can. So because it soon became clear that no one among the East German authorities would take personal responsibility for issuing orders to uh, force the um, East German border guards to shoot uh, those who tried to get through the wall with real bullets, either killing or seriously wounding them. The vastly outnumbered soldiers had no way to hold back the huge crowd of East German citizens. In an article published by Washington Post, a major American newspaper in 2009, Mary Elise Sahot characterized the series of events leading to the fall of the wall as an accident, saying, one of the most momentous events of the past century was, in fact, an accident, a semi-comical and bureaucratic mistake and that owes as much to the Western media as to the tides of history. Finally, either at 10.45 p.m. Central European time or alternatively at 11.30 p.m. Central European time on November the 9th, 1989, <clears throat> Mr. Harald Jäger, the commander of the Bornholmer Straße, or Bornholm, or Bornholmer uh, Street border crossing gave up, allowing the guards to open the checkpoints and allowing people to go through the gates with little or no identity checking. As these East Berliners and East Germans uh, swarmed through the open uh, gates, they were uh, enthusiastically greeted by West Germans. West Berliners more specifically, and in the German slang, East Germans had become known as die Ossis. Uh, of course, the formal name would be the Ostdeutscher. The West Germans had been uh, become known as die Dessis, a short form for the Westdeutscher, because informally, uh, East Germany was called Ostdeutschland and West Germany was called uh, Westdeutschland in German. Waiting with flowers and champagne made wild rejoicing. Soon afterward, a crowd of West Berliners jumped on top of the wall and were soon joined by East German youngsters. <coughs> the evening of November the 9th, 1989, is known as the night the wall came down, although its dismantling only started <coughs> several days earlier, uh, several days later, sorry. It's even possible that another border crossing to the south was opened earlier. An account by Mr. Heinz Schäfer indicates that he also acted independently and ordered the opening of the gate at Waltersdorf Rudolf a couple of hours earlier. So if this account is true, it would explain 
or possibly would explain reports of East Berliners appearing in West Berlin earlier than the Bornholmer Straße border crossing had been officially opened. <clears throat> So days after the opening of the Berlin Wall, uh, East Germans, including, of course, especially East Berliners, started to uh, chip away pieces of the hated uh, Berlin Wall. They were nicknamed die Mauerspechte, or wall woodpeckers. They demolished lengthy parts in the process, creating several unofficial border crossings. Television co coverage of citizens demolishing sections of the wall on November the 9th, 1989 was soon followed by the East German regime announcing 10 new border crossings, including the historically significant locations of Potsdamer Platz or Potsdam Square, Glienicker Brücke and Bernauer Straße or Bernauer Street. While the wall officially remained guarded at a decre decreasing intensity, new border crossings continued for some time. Initially, the East German border troops attempted repairing damage done by the wall peckers. Gradually, these attempts ceased, and guards became more lax, tolerating the increasing demolitions and unauthorized border crossing through the holes. The uh, symbolic Brandenburg Gate in the Berlin Wall was opened on December the 22nd, 1989, so about six weeks after the wall was opened. <clears throat> on that date, West German Federal Chancellor or Prime Minister Helmut Kohl walked through the gate and was greeted by East German Prime Minister Mr. Hans Mondhoff. West Germans and East West Berliners were allowed visa-free travel <coughs> starting on December the 23rd. <coughs> Until then, they could only visit East Germany and East Berlin under restrictive conditions that involved applying <coughs> for a visa several days or weeks in advance and the visa applications acceptance by the East German authorities was never guaranteed, nor did they have to state any reason for their refusal to allow uh, such visa travel to specific individuals. In advance, an obligatory exchange of at least 25 German marks at the poor exchange rate, where one West German mark, which was actually worth a lot more than the East German mark, uh, was nominally equal to one East German mark. <laughs> per day of their planned stay, all of which hindered spontaneous visits. Thus, in the weeks between November the 9th and December the 23rd, 1989, East Germans could actually travel more freely than Westerners. On June the 13th, 1990, so seven months after the fall or opening of the Berlin Wall, the East German border troops officially began dismantling the wall. <laughs> Beginning in the Hnauer Straße and around the Mitte district. From there, demolition continued through Prenzlauer Berg uh, slash Gesundbrunnen, Heiligen, Zee, and uh, through the city of Berlin, or throughout the city of Berlin until December 1990, by which time the two Germanys had already reunited because that happened on October the 3rd, 1990. According to estimates by the border troops, a total of around 1.7 million tons of building rubble was produced by the demolition. Only short sections of the Berlin Wall remain standing for historical purposes. Unofficially, the demolition of the Bornholmer Straße began because of construction work on the railway. This involved a total of 300 East German border guards, and after November, October the 3rd, 1990, 600 pioneers of the you know, reunified Germany's um, defense force or army Bundeswehr. These were equipped with 175 trucks, 65 cranes, 55 excavators, and 13 bulldozers. <clears throat> Virtually every road that was severed by the Berlin Wall, every road that once linked from West Berlin to East Berlin, was reconstructed and reopened by August the 1st, 1990. In Berlin alone, 184 kilometers of wall, 
154 kilometers of border fence, 144 kilometers of signal systems, and 87 kilometers of barrier ditches were removed. What remained were six sections that were to be preserved as a memorial. <coughs> Various military units uh, by November 1991 had completed the work of dismantling the uh, berlin brandenburg border wall. Painted wall segments with artistically valuable motifs were put up for auction in 1990 in Berlin and Monte Carlo. The wall's demolition was officially all completed by 1992. On July the 1st, 1990, so just three months before the official reunification of the two Germanys, East Germany adopted the West German currency. All legal border control ceased, although the inter-German or inner German border had become meaningless for some time before that. So just 339 days after the opening of the Berlin Wall, on October 3rd, 1990, West Germany and <clears throat> East Germany reunited uh, into the Federal Republic of Germany. And it became, of course, a democracy. In some European capitals at the time, interestingly enough, there was a deep anxiety over the prospects for a reunified Germany. In September 1989, British Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher pleaded with Soviet General Secretary and President Mikhail Gorbachev not to let the Berlin Wall fall and confided that she wanted the Soviet leader to do what he could to stop it. <coughs> According to Wikipedia, Margaret Thatcher said the following to uh, Mikhail Gorbachev. We do not want a united Germany. This would lead to a change to post-war borders and we cannot allow that because such a development would undermine the stability of the whole international situation and could endanger our security. After the fall of the Berlin Wall, French President François Mitterrand warned Thatcher that a unified Germany could make more ground than Adolf Hitler, the late Nazi German dictator, ever had, <clears throat> and that Europe would have to bear the consequences. On December the 25th, 1989, Leonard Bernstein gave a concert in Berlin celebrating the end of the wall, including Beethoven's Ninth Symphony, Ode to Joy, with the word Joy Freude changed to Freedom, Freiheit in the lyrics sung. On New Year's Eve 1989, David Hasselhoff performed his song Looking for Freedom while standing atop the party demolished wall. Over the years, there has, a, there has been a repeated controversial debate as to whether November the 9th would make a suitable German national holiday, often initiated by former members of political opposition in East Germany, such as Mr. Werner Schulz. Besides being the emotional apogee of East Germany's peaceful revolution, November the 9th is also the date of the 1918 abdication of Kaiser or Emperor Wilhelm or William II, marking the official end of the <clears throat> Second German Empire and declaration of the Weimar Republic, the first German Republic. However, November the 9th is also the anniversary of the execution of Robert Blum following the 1848 Vienna revolts, the 1923 Nazi uh, beer hall putsch, and the infamous Kristallnacht pogroms or uh, <coughs> attacks on the Jews, <coughs> German Jews by the German Nazis, in 1938. Nobel laureate, writer and educator Mr. Eli Wiesel, a Romanian Jew who emigrated to the United States after the Second World War and hence was a Holocaust survivor, criticized the first euphoria, noting that they forgot that November the 9th has already entered into history. 51 years earlier it marked the Kristallnacht. As reunification was not official and complete until October the 3rd, that day was finally chosen as the German Unity Day. 
In the United States, the German embassy coordinated a public diplomacy campaign with the motto of Freedom Without Walls to commemorate the 20th anniversary of the fall of the Berlin Wall in November 2009. An international project called Mauerkreise, or Journey of the Wall, took place in various countries. 20 symbolic wall bricks were sp sp uh, sent from Berlin starting in May 2009 to South Korea, Cyprus, Yemen, and other places where, I'm sorry, yeah, where everyday life is characterized by division and border experience. In these places, the bricks will become known as a blank, black canvas for artists, intellectuals, artists, intellectuals, and young people to tackle the wall phenomenon. To commemorate the 20th anniversary of the fall of the Berlin Wall, the 3D online virtual world Twinity reconstructed a true to scale section of the wall in virtual <clears throat> Berlin. On November the 4th, 2019 began the week of uh, festivities to mark the 30th anniversary celebration of the opening or fall of the Berlin Wall. And on <clears throat> November the 9th, today there will be a citywide music festival to celebrate the 30th anniversary. On November the 4th, outdoor exhibits opened at Alexanderplatz, the Brandenburg Gate, the East Side Gallery, Gethsemane Church, Kurfürstendamm, Schlossplatz, and the former Stasi headquarters in Lichtenberg. 